Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Jay Clapp. I am the Photography Junkie. You're joining me today on a somewhat windy beach in Northern England and we're going to answer one of your questions. I recently got, a, got an email from somebody and they wanted to know how to do self-portraits but have that in such a way that it's repeatable and gives good quality results each time. So uh, while we set for a bit of a, a challenge, I decided to throw in and do a little tutorial on it. Okay, so first things you're going to need for doing self-portrait is obviously a camera and a tripod. So I'll grab those in a second. So the camera that I'm going to be using for, for the purpose of this demonstration is my Sony A77. It's currently record, being recorded on the Sony NEX and it's a Manfrotto tripod. But any, any sturdy tripod will do for this, for this purpose. So the first things that we need to actually think about is how does, how does it work? How, how does a lens work? Why is it that putting, putting a tripod where you're going to stand, it's not always going to work for you unless you know what you're doing. So um, the thing that, why, that I wanted to start to think about is to give you the tools that you need to be able to achieve the job well. So starting things off, we need to think about how a lens works. So what I'll do is I'm going to move back a little bit. So you have your subject, which is currently me, and I'm roughly, I'd say about three meters away from the camera. Now what you are not seeing is the camera's out of focus here out of focus here, it's coming into focus, it's more in focus and now it's in focus and then for a certain amount of distance afterwards it then goes out of focus. So what, what a lot of people get confused about first of all is they shoot wide open as they can and everything's all shallow depth of field and they wonder why their self portraits are out of focus. So knowing how much you've got in focus is always going to be a useful thing. And one thing that I found really useful for that is actually on my phone, I have a depth of field calculator and it's available for uh, iPhone and Android systems. So you just need to go on to the store and actually just, just download one for free. And what they do is they, do something and work out the distance of what's called hyperfocal distance. So don't don't be afraid, we're not going to turn this into a maths lesson, but basically hyperfocal distance is based on the size of your sensor, the focal length of your lens, the distance to subject and your aperture. And if you change any of those things, you get more front to back distance or less front to back distance that's in focus. Uh, landscape photographers have been using this for some time and I find that it's actually pretty useful for people. So I'm just gonna tell you that the distance, remember we're at three meters, in meters, three meters, I've got a 50mm lens on there and I'm going to shoot at f5.6 to start with and that's telling me that I've got 2.6 feet that's in focus. So in meters that's just short of one meter. That means 
that from two meters, uh, 2.6 meters, which is about there, to three meters, which is about there, that's all I've got in focus. So it's, it's quite easy to see how if you step back, then you can be out of focus. If you go back in, then you can be back in focus again. So what happens if we want more in focus then? Well, because we're on a tripod, our shutter speed makes no difference in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop down and this is going to give us more front to back distance from the camera that's in focus. The more, the more that you have in focus, the more movement area that you have, the more easy your job is in terms of shooting and self portraits. So we're going to go from f5.6 to f8 and that takes us to just short two meters that we've got in focus which is a lot better to work with when you're shooting yourself. It's always nice to have a little mark. I'm going to fire off a shot and we'll see how that goes. We're on 50th of a second. So, the next problem that we come to when we're actually doing a selfie is getting a focus. Now, on this particular camera here, as you'll see on the side, which is a, of the 50mm lens that I have on it, is a switch that switches it from autofocus to manual focus. And it's very, very useful because it means I don't have to dive into any menus, but on some cameras, there's also the button to turn it into a manual focus as well, which is actually situated on the camera itself. So what I'm gonna do is I know that I want to be roughly three meters away. Uh, we've looked at the calculator. It's told me that that's gonna be my distance that I'm going to be at. So I'm looking along the points for something that's roughly three meters away and I'm literally just going to get focus on it and what I'm doing is I'm half pressing so right now this button's half pressed so as with most cameras you half press the shutter and it locks your focus so long as you keep your finger on that button and keep it half pressed you can recompose the image so once again I have a mark about three meters away. I'm half pressing it. I've got my focus. And now with it half pressed, I'm switching it to manual focus. And I can now release my finger. So I can bring the camera back up to where I want it to be. And we have it all locked in. So all that's left for me to do now is to change my trigger method to a 10 second timer. You can always use a remote trigger, which I do have, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'm purely sticking with the timer. And we'll press it. That's, that's doing its thing. It gives you time to get to where you want to go and it fires. Of course sometimes it takes a couple of attempts but looking at the back of the camera right now I am perfectly in focus. Actually go further back. What going further back is going to do is going to give you even more distance front to back from the camera that's going to be in focus which makes your job even easier. I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing again but this time I'm going to be focusing further away which means I get more of my body in and hopefully we'll do a full body shot on this one 
and this time I'm going to be focusing on something roughly about five meters away. I'll do exactly the same process as before. So I'll get focus, aiming at something five meters away. I've half pressed, I'm flicking the switch. So that's now in manual focus mode. Camera's now outwards. So I'm going to set the timer going. That's now firing. I'll walk out quite casually. and come back and check the shot. So zooming in on the image right now. I can see that I am sharp. And that's how we do self-portraits.